This year, the Juggernauts picked up right where they left off in 2021 by winning the MAW opening day tournament, much to the chagrin of the other teams there. However, those other squads would have to wait to get their revenge, as the next scheduled tournament, the Backyard Brawl in early May, was canceled due to poor weather. After a long wait, MAW would take to the field once again with the Battle by the Bay tournament hosted in Millersville, Maryland this past weekend. The tournament featured 12 teams and the awesome whiffs action that you would expect. Today on Wiffle Statement, we are recapping all the action and seeing who would hoist the belt in MAW's second tournament of 2022. Get out! Get out! One team that came into the 2022 season looking to make a lot of noise was the Stompers. But after a lackluster opening day where the team didn't even make it out of pool play, they looked to get a quick turnaround in this tournament, giving the ball to the power lefty Bryce Clark. Clark would chuck against the defending champs, not relinquishing a run. Unfortunately for Stompers fans, Red Sarnowski was just as dominant on the opposite end. The game would grind out into the seventh inning, where Red Sarnowski would deliver an opposite field walk-off home run to give the Jugs their seventh win of the young season. The morning would not get any better for the Stompers as they would lose another 1-0 bout to the Yaks. Dan Potter delivered a long RBI single late in the game off of the Stompers' young ace, Gino Joseph. Jared Bull would close out the game to put the Yaks in the 2-0 club along with the Juggernauts. Joining the undefeated club would be two powerhouses that stormed through the pool play games. The first team would be Earl, looking to avail themselves of their Mercy Rule elimination game in the opening day tournament. In his first tournament of 2022, Johnny Costa would hurl from the rubber and get some help in the outfield from team captain Connor Young. When the smoke settled, Earl had earned themselves the number one seeded spot in the playoff rounds. Not far behind, Voodoo was rolling with some wiffle magic and some tenacious pitching. They would get early wins against the Maryland Four Horsemen and OG Goon Squad to earn their playoff spot. The tournament's playoff round would begin with a rematch of the opening day tournament finals. The Juggernauts giving the ball to their new arm Ray Luddick, who had been dominant thus far in the day, similar to his opening day performance. Meanwhile, team captain for Voodoo Jordan Robles would take the ball for his team, and the game was as advertised, an absolute pitcher's duel. The game would move on into the last frame still deadlocked at zeros. Vin Lee and Jordan Robles would both work a pair of one-out walks to put a runner in scoring position. Ray Luddick would respond with a strikeout, sending Kenny Stengel to the plate in a big two-out situation. That clutch RBI double by Kenny Stengel gave Voodoo the 2 0 advantage, breaking up a 20 and 2 thirds shutout inning streak thrown by Ray Luddick. Jordan Robles closed out the game, putting Voodoo in the finals for the second tournament in a row. Not far away, the Yaks found themselves in a deadlock matchup against Earl. The Yaks had lost to Earl earlier in the day but were coming into the semifinals matchup after a victory over the Ridley Park Magic. The pitching duel theme of this tournament would continue as this game would remain at zeros 
into extras. That is, until Connor Young delivered with a walk-off home run to put Earl into their first tournament finals game of 2022. The Battle of the Bay tournament championship matchup was set. Earl versus Voodoo, each hoping to hoist the belt for the first time this season. In case you missed it, almost every game in this tournament had been a pitcher's battle deadlocking teams at zeros trying to get that crucial run. The finals would be no different. Jordan Robles would get the ball for Voodoo and he would face off against the always shirtless and always fiery Mike Stiles. Jordan Robles would hurl a scoreless first frame and throw out an opposite field single in the top of the second. But Mike Stiles was up to the challenge he would hurl strikeout after strikeout to work scoreless frames of his own. In the bottom of the third, Connor Young would lead off with a long single. After this, Robles intentionally walked the ever-dangerous Kenny Rogers Jr., who already had had a hit in the game. This intentional walk would bring up Styles, who Robles would strike out with some high heat. Up next, Johnny Costa and Young would both strike out, not being able to play to run with first and second and no outs. Styles would go on to respond with a three up, three down inning of his own. Going into the top of the fourth, Voodoo pulled Robles for Vin Lee. Vin and Styles went on to trade zeros, sending the pitcher's duel into the bottom of the last, still scoreless. In the bottom of the fifth, Vin Lee would struggle with control and put runners on first and second with two outs and Kenny Rogers coming to the plate. In a surprising move for all, Voodoo opted to not only put their starter back into the game, but to also intentionally walk Rogers in order to have Robles face Styles. In a walk-off situation, this walk also loaded the bases, and so Styles came to the plate trying to come up big for his team. But the gutsy move paid off, as Robles would K Styles to send the game into extras. But Styles was now locked into a war of attrition, and he would continue to shut down Voodoo, hurling a three up, three down inning, sending his team back to the plate. In the bottom of the six, Voodoo would put Vin Lee on the rubber, but his control problems continued as he would give up a leadoff walk. Fortunately for Voodoo fans, they would be able to turn a double play to clear the bases. But even with the bases empty, Voodoo opted to go with their trademark move of intentionally walking Kenny Rogers Jr. for the third time in the game in order to pitch to Styles, who was still hitless in this game so far. After being a workaround out for Voodoo all game, Styles shut up the naysayers, delivering a walk-off, opposite field home run to end the game, the tournament, and give Earl their first tournament title of 2022 in the Battle by the Bay. Congratulations to Earl on an electric tournament walk-off win.
And there it is, guys, the official Wiffle Statement recap of the Mid-Atlantic Battle by the Bay tournament. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did and would like to see more top-tier content just like it, please go ahead and drop a like and subscribe. Also, let me know what you thought of this event down below. I would really like to know. You can also follow me on Twitter at WiffleStatement, where I have been very consistent in posting stuff all year and plan to be throughout the season. To watch more from the tournament, you can check out the link at the end of this video for the full finals game edited by yours truly. You can also look down in the description for all links MAW related. The season is in full swing and you do not want to miss out on any of the action as we approach the third tournament of the season. That's going to do it for me, fellas. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, get out there and play some whiffs, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Goodbye.